Somebody it is starting to happen it. like more often though. Yeah. Well, what's weird is that airports now there will be people waiting with like tons of stuff for me to sign, and they're like, "We've been waiting here really? all day." Oh yeah, it's for getting you to bad. Show up. Wow. Like, okay. Are these like are these like middle aged guys who look like they might not have a lot of hobbies, and they're like, "Please <laughs> I mean, sign some this." Sometimes. They are all, like, where is the place that like? The baggage most people. claim, rental car well, places. Well, what happens is they'll find me, like, right after we put our bags and we're get, heading to TSA, they'll find me, and then when we land, they'll, like, call their friends in Arizona, and they'll be like, hey, our guys called us from Miami and told you told us you'd be on this flight, and then they're, like, waiting for us. Yeah. How do they yeah. know, how do they know, like, that's what when we you're... Can't we, out. Yeah, we can't that's figure it out. That's what we can't figure out. And that's out. the creepy that's part. The creep. that's, that's the really the, weird that's part. The, like, the... All right, you guys know Gamma. They just came out with their new Airbender paddle. Being able to change your paddle is a game changer with the new Gamma Airbender. With the variable weighted end caps and Zorbicon Shock Buster gel inserts, you can tailor your paddle to fit your game perfectly. That's right, Zorbicon Shock Buster gel inserts. Adapt on the fly and reduce harmful vibrations for smoother play. Get your Airbender today and use code DINK10 for 10% off your purchase on Gammasports.com. That's all caps DINK10. For 10% off your purchase at Gammasports.com. Everybody's going to want the Zorbicon Shockbuster gel inserts. So go get yours. The new Airbender paddle from Gamma. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, Tyler has fun on Yagi. But on that note, I mean, we can start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So we can uh, we can jump in here. I am, I'm late to my own podcast. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Did Zane keep you guys uh, entertained? Yeah, that's what I was saying. We already had the interview with Zane. I, I think we, we think we're done here. Any question you ask, and be like, well, Zane's already <laughs> asked that question. So. All right, well, maybe we don't start with a question. We, we start with an opportunity for you two to make a statement. Oh. Does that sound, does that yeah. sound good? Yeah, you want to make a statement? Is it the statement I'm thinking of? Yeah, I think no. so. Well, what's the statement you're know. thinking of? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait. Well, okay. The but if you years. want to take it in that direction. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought we were going to do this thing where she knew what I was going to say. We were going to say it at the same time. Well, now I'm confused. Like... Thomas confused me. <laughs> Have you seen the TikTok where people are like, you, tr you, tr you look at somebody, you try to think of the same word, and then you, it's like three, two, one, and then you like say it? Yeah. You've seen that? Yes. Does it work? It's more like a couple. I've mean, done it with Ben. Well... <laughs> That counts. I've done it with Ben, and we've actually gotten a couple. Seriously? Yeah. Huh. But I think people probably tell each other before they do the no. TikTok. No. Well, maybe. But we didn't, and we got it. All right, so your 16th birthday. 16th? From what I understand, it was your 16th birthday, right? I'm 17 now. This yes, year? Yes. Yeah. But, oh, you mean uh, last year? Yeah. Oh, you, okay. did, you did have a 16th calm down birthday. Down <laughs> I, was like, well, I was like, what? <laughs> All right, you got a Range Rover Sport 2021? Yes. Okay, so I wanted to give you an opportunity to maybe talk to Carvana and ask why you didn't get a 2023, <laughs> you know, like HSE, the guy owns the company. You know, I think it's a little cheap. It was a 2021. Well, my parents actually picked out the car, so I guess it's our fault. It's their fault, <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing about the Carvana thing was I didn't know it was going to happen. I was just going there because they said we might do like a video and my agent actually flew in, but I don't know, I guess because I was 16. We told her we were going to do like, a meet and greet with Carvana. Yeah, it was like right, right before the know. tournament. And, and then yeah. they like pulled the car down and my mom's like, this is your car. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't know who gave it to me at the time. Like if it was just my parents and they used Carvana or if it like Carvana had given it to me. Right. Like, no, it's Carvana. So yeah. That was pretty cool. I don't know how they picked out the car. I know they used the app, I think, but I don't know. Well, you had you had told us like the kind of cars that you liked, you know, before your birthday. And so, yeah, we just dealt with Carvana and finding what we thought you would like. And then um, and then we did the whole surprise reveal thing and then we shot the commercial after. Right. So that's oh, how okay. it, that's how the commercial mm, yeah. got And then got after it. I got the car because I didn't have to pay for the car, I got it wrapped. So I was like, nice. All right, Wait, this, this did you do like uh, what 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 color? It's like uh, so it it's like different colors depending on like the sun. It's so like, like iridescent. Yeah, so oh, like wow. a light super blue, bright. Iridescent. It's like goldish blue, and then at night it's like a matte blue. So it's cool. So when you show up to the local pickleball courts, you get out of your iridescent <laughs> Range Rover. You're 17 years old. You're like, I'm here to play. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Well, Carvana. I'm open for business <laughs> too, like, yeah. whatever you want. I don't need a Range Rover. I'll take a Hyundai, whatever. Uh, used, new, doesn't matter to me, so. I know, right, those are pretty sweet 16, cool. like, yeah. yeah. 
I'm never no pun intended. Sweet, yeah. sweet sixteen. Yeah. Did so they actually that? like bring it down the vending machine? Yeah, thing? they, they, they did brought the whole, it down the vending. Yeah. They gave machine. her a coin. They were like, "Hey, you want to see how the vending machine works?" A coin? Would, yeah, yeah, they had these big so like, like a, silver coins. That's how like whoever goes to buy a car, they get the right. coin and you stick it in the uh, vending machine. They call it. So she's like, oh, cool, and she throws the thing in there, and then the car comes down. I think it had a bow on it, right? Yeah, and it was a Range Rover, and I'm like, oh, that, like, that's the car that I want. Like, ha, 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 and they're like, oh, it's yours, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and then they made me drive it around the parking lot, and I was like, <laughs> so don't crash. Because yeah. right. I actually, I don't think I had my license at You had your point. permit. I had my permit. But all, like there was a camera guy and his camera's on me and I'm like, can I at one and in two, like make sure to keep like don't crash this car. <laughs> so is that ad played? Obviously, it's played on a ton of pickleball stuff. But is that like a national ad? Is that a TV ad as well? Do you guys know? I think it's only played when pickleball is played. But I think it's played whenever it's on like a national. Like network. if it's on ESPN or something like that, it's played. But it's during pickleball. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. It, yeah, it's it pretty plays cool. in my dreams because I've seen it so many times. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. We even got yeah. sick of it for a little yeah. while in the beginning. Yeah. All right. So let's ask a uh, a real question, and this is uh, a little more vague, but. You're the number one player in the world in a fast scoring sport, Annalie. Just generally, what is that like? And then I want to know from your perspective, what's that like? All the hype, the pressure, being her mom. I guess I'll go first. You'll go first. Yeah, I'll yeah. go first. Well, it's kind of weird to say this, but I've been playing professional pickleball since I was 11. <laughs> so it honestly feels kind of like the norm, just going to like a tournament. Um, and I feel like I've kind of grown with the sport, so I kind of... Like, if I would have just started playing pro pickleball when it was this big, I think it would have been harder for me because it would have felt more like a big deal. But because I started when it was younger and it was, like, taped courts when you were playing pro, it just, like, doesn't feel like it's that big of a deal. So, like, I feel like now, even though the sport's way bigger and it is a huge deal, I go out there and it still kind of feels like I'm just at, like, a local pro tournament playing pickleball. Not saying that the pressure doesn't get to me all the time because it does, but... I think it, it's just helped me accept the fact because I've been doing it for so long. Like my first number one title was I was 14 in singles. That's when I was ranked number one for the first time. Yeah. So right. it's been three years now. So I think, you know, the longer um, that I've been number one, I've just kind of figured out different ways to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you almost like naturally eased into it with the evolution of the sport. Right. That's what so I'm it saying. It probably made it easier. It did for sure. Like yeah. when people say, Annalie, like, how do you, you're only, I'm like, well, I've been doing this for like a long time now. So it was like right. it, people like looking in on the sport now, I don't think realize how long I've been playing. Um, no, because everybody thinks it's brand it's new. It's a brand new sport. They don't sport. realize that people were even playing pickleball. <laughs> but it's six been years it's ago. almost been like a decade now. Like we're on getting ready to go on seven years that I've been playing the sport. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. And, and as far as like from my perspective, I don't know how she does it. Because for me, I know if, if I was out there, I would be so nervous all the time. The pressure would be getting to me. I'd be afraid to lose, you know, afraid to lose every time I stepped on the court. Um but somehow, I think what makes her number one and, and the reason she's been able to stay there is because she is so mentally tough. And I think that you can definitely work on your mental skills, but it's also something that's sort of, I think, in, innate in you to believe in yourself and to have that kind of confidence. And she definitely has it. I mean, she's had a couple moments in time where <laughs> she's cracked. Um, and unfortunately, it's in the public Right. you mm -hmm. um but the fact that it's only happened once or twice and with all this pressure and all these eyes looking at you and how often we as pros well I don't really play anymore but we have to play I mean mm -hmm. you play so many matches and the thing is is you're playing like the same people at every event or at every tournament so it's like man I just beat this person last weekend and now I got to do it again and then you know what I mean and especially if the draws are similar like I think I played Lena I, it's really hard for me to say a lot. Padigamite. Padigamite. Well, I play Lina. Like, I played her almost every tournament for, like, eight tournaments in a row. And it's always a tough match. Like, it goes three or it's close two. And it's, like, if every weekend you're, like, oh, my gosh, I got to play this girl again who could potentially beat me, whether that's Lina or a mixed double seam or whoever. Um, so I think that's something else that is difficult. Because you look at tennis and you're literally playing somebody different at every tournament. Because mm -hmm. there's just too many tennis players to play the same people. Whereas pickleball, it's like, 
this person knows every shot I'm going to hit, you know, I know every shot they're going to hit. So, you know, <laughs> I guess we'll see how this goes type thing. Yeah. But I, th- I think, um, I think I have a real admiration for her, for what she's done and what she's able to do. And, um, you yeah, know, just really proud. And I just, I love that I got to play with her when I did, and now I get to coach her. I think she makes it a lot easier for me, too, because she's on the bench, so I automatically feel more comfortable on the court because right. she knows what I what it's like to be a pro athlete, and she knows how to coach me, especially because she's my mom. Like Regular coaches may not know necessarily how to coach a player because maybe somebody likes being yelled at. Maybe somebody needs more of a cheerleader on the side. You know, It really depends on the player, and she knows exactly how to coach me. So I know if I'm in a tough spot, she's going to help me get out of it. Mm-hmm. And what is that? Do you want her to yell at you or uh, do you want her? Yeah. She said a couple <laughs> things that cannot be said on camera. <laughs> it's okay. We have a swear jar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you swear, it goes to a good cause. For a good cause. No, yeah. it's like she, she's just, she'll, she'll blatantly say, Annalie, you're playing bad. You need to play better. Or you're going to lose. Like she will say stuff like that to me or. And that's that good, was a nice way of. And that, yeah. Or, <laughs> or like, Annalie, get your head out of your butt and play better. Like, or Annalie, you know. Things I would never say as a mother, but like, I just know how, like how she works and I know what she needs. And I know like sometimes I I'll say things to her on the bench that aren't even pickleball related just to like get some emotion just to Mm -hmm. get it fired her up. And you know, she'll be like, thanks a lot. Why'd you do? And then she goes out there and plays like an animal. Yeah. So it's just, I play better when I'm like fired up, pumped up, like angry. Like if somebody makes me angry across the court, I'm like, why'd you do that? Like you just made me play better. (laughs) So are there any like particular challenges of obviously you have Annalie as the as the the player but then there's Annalie as as your kid right yeah like, um you would think that there would be a lot of challenges and I think that's probably like a question I get most from fans you know is like how do you do it I can't you know I can't play with my daughter I could never you know have the, that type of relationship I think maybe the fact that we played together first really helped because we formed this really strong teammate dynamic when we played together which was not mother and daughter I mean even when she was 11 and 12 she was coaching me out there as much as I was coaching her and giving strategy points and I think too because like if you see like a kid I'm just gonna use tennis as an example playing tennis and their parents coaching them but their parents never played the sport the Mm -hmm. kids kind of like how do you know what to tell me type thing? And I have a lot of respect for her as a player because before me, she was ranked number one. So I really like know what she's saying is the right thing. And it's not like, I'm just like, oh, like, why are you telling me that? I like want her to tell me things, which I think makes it work better. Cause if I was like not wanting her advice, that's where like problems. I think the other thing that helps too, which people might be interested in (laughs) is that I don't plan her training. Like I don't plan her training. I don't do her workouts. I don't plan her day. She does the entire thing. She says, mom, I want to hit at 9 a.m., be at the courts. You know, I'm at the courts, and then I'll be like, what are you doing today? Well, I have, you know, my trainer, Brandon, at this time. I'm going to PT at this time. You know, she does all of that. So she's not getting, she doesn't feel like I'm running her life, you Mm -hmm. know. And so I think we're really able to separate that, like, I mean, if she tells me, mom, I'm not playing pickleball for three days, I'm like, okay, don't, you know. She's not getting that sort of pressure, and so I think the mom coach thing doesn't really intersect. Well, she's that also often. not the type of person who's like, "You need to play pickleball every day for three hours a day." Like, she she kind of believes because I am so young. Like, if I don't want to play pickleball, it's better to not play pickleball that day because of how many years I still have left in the sport and to not get burnt out. So there's a lot of times after tournaments where I think people don't realize. Like, sometimes I'll take like five, six days off of not playing pickleball. Like, I'll still work out. But if I've just played a progressive draw for, like, five, six days in a row, by Sunday, I'm like, I don't want to see a pickleball again for a long time. (laughs) So it's like, I just, yeah. What do you do when you're taking that time off? Like, what's... uh... Well, I train. I'll do school because I'm still in school, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, right. That that thing. (laughs) Um, And then I'll do fun stuff. Or we might have commitments like we were just in uh, California for FILA at the Indian Wells Tennis um, tournament going on there. So maybe I'll have something like that that I just can't play pickleball. So there's always something going on. What about college? Are you going to go to college? Maybe after pickleball. Maybe some online course. Not right away. Okay. Because that would be like 
after this summer, I would be going to college, and that just I think you could sense. go to, like, any school you want to, though. <laughs> this is a si- pretty sick resume. <laughs> like I thought about, 30 like, 30. maybe after pickleball, like, trying to play soccer in college, because yeah. I love soccer cool. so right. much. That'd be so. sweet. Just kind of like, like the J.R. Smith, right? He played in the <laughs> yeah, NBA yeah, right. and went back and played college college golf. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, so that might be cool. Do you play we'll soccer see. at all anymore? So what was it, a year ago? I said to my mom, I was like, hey, I want to go watch my old girls team play mm. a soccer game. And when we got there, it was a scrimmage. Like there was a ref and there was another team, but it was like a scrimmage. And you happen to have your cleats in your backpack. No, but I was like, I said to my coach, I was like, hey, can I like, can I play in this? And he's like, if you want to. And it was all the girls I knew. So they were like, I'll loan you my cleats. Like right. I'll give you my, my jersey, yeah. like whatever. Like, and I'm like, I, I called my trainer and I was like, hey, can I play? And he's like, he didn't really want me to play, but he knew how much I loved it. Because I didn't really go off on my own terms. Like the last game I played, I didn't know it was my last game. Right. Yeah. Um, And he was like, if you want to. So I ended up playing for like 20 minutes maybe. And it was like the best 20 minutes of my right. life. And now I'm kind of at peace with the fact that I'm not playing because before I used to get really upset about it. But now I'm like, OK, I knew it was my last time. I'm fine now. Mm hmm. What about when you're out in public? Do you get recognized ever, either of you? I asked Zane this. He says every once in a while there's some random guy in a scooter. He's like, Zane. <laughs> random guy. But it's, That's uh, so funny. it's not too common. Well, it's actually funny because today when we were getting our rental car, the lady was like, what's your name? And I was like, Annalie Waters. She goes, hold on. My manager told me to wait for like if you if you came up to like go in the back and get him. And then she went to the back, got the manager out. I think it was Alamo. And the guy comes out, like takes photos and is like this big pickleball fan. <laughs> so it's it's like the most random places, kind of right. like Zane said, where like somebody it is starting to happen him. like more often, though. Yeah. Well, what's weird is that airports now. There will be people waiting with like tons of stuff for me to sign, and they're like, "We've been waiting here really? all day." Oh yeah, it's for getting you to bad. Show up. Wow. Like, okay, are these like are these like middle-aged guys who look like they might not have a lot of hobbies, and they're like, "Please <laughs> I mean, sign some, this." Sometimes they are all they are all guys. They are. I would be men. a little scared if I wasn't with my parents. Like if I was just traveling right. by myself, I think I would be a little freaked Those out. Those autograph guys can be but, uh, a little interesting. That's yeah. creepy. Where's where's like the <laughs> the it's a, it's a uh, a little strange like where is the place that like the baggage most people... claim rental car well places. what happens is they'll find me like right after we put our bags and we're get, heading to tsa they'll find me and then when we land they'll like call their friends in arizona and they'll be like hey our guys called us from miami and told you told us you'd be on this flight and then they're like waiting for us yeah like, how do they yeah. know how do they know like, that's what when we you're... can't figure we, out yeah we can't that's figure what it we out can't figure and that's out. the creepy part that's the, creep. that's the that's really the, weird part that's like the, yeah. are they there for like three days ahead of a tournament because like, like they told like the last time they were like we've been here all day okay yeah <laughs> but we don't know if they just like if they just know the flight we're on like we don't know as i said not not many hobbies, I would assume. <laughs> well, we think they're selling this stuff online. Yeah, yeah, they go, they go, put it right on. One time, what, what the happens? guys brought us a pic, a portrait of me, and gave it to me as a gift for signing all the things. Like it's just oh, like, really? yeah. I think what happens more than her like getting, just recognized like right off the bat is like you know you go into a store or whatever and oh why are you here pickleball and then they'll be like wait are you and, and, and right. you I swear know, they sometimes recognize people more that way. recognize like. I was at Blaze Pizza once and the lady was like like she like she was not like she wasn't happy you could tell she wasn't happy and then she looked at me started smiling and was like what's your name and I just said Anna cuz I didn't want to like yeah. I was like Anna and she was like it was like she knew <laughs> But she didn't say anything. Like her whole mood changed, and then like we went along. She didn't say anything. But like, <clears throat> I you swear that happens people, all the time. Yeah. yeah, they just don't say anything, but they know. It's almost worse because they're just looking at you and staring at <laughs> yeah. you, and they're like, "Is that the the person? Yeah. Like, is yeah. that not the person?" And they're yeah. just staring, and I don't think they realize that they're just right. like looking at you. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that has happened to me a few times. Yeah. I'm sure a million times more for you guys, but just the the stare is so much just worse. Just go yes, yes. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm sure you've had some unique events, like some really cool experiences. What's the most surreal experience, whether it's like hanging out with a celebrity or, you know, like Josh Richards giving you the birthday <laughs> shout out? I hope that's not the answer, <laughs> but what would be that the most the surreal answer. experience where you're like, how is this happening to me? Um, I might honestly, I'm sure there's been a couple times, but I might say this last weekend at Indian, Indian Wells when I was at the tennis tournament and 
like a lot of the pro tennis players and the people working on Tennis Channel all knew who I was. And I was sitting on the booth and I was like, I don't know, I felt like pickleball had like made it in a kind of sense right. because Coco Vandaway was like talking to me like, yeah, I've seen you on TV. Like all these people had like seen me and I was like, whoa, like, and I, we met Francis Tiafo and yeah. he was like, yeah, I've seen you play. Like you're, aren't, don't you have a tournament coming up? Like all, it's like all the pro tennis players know about pickleball, whether they want to admit it or not. They like, keep it was up cool because we, we were sitting like in the Fila box watching the, the night we Jokovic? were watching Alcaraz. Alcaraz. And all of a sudden we were, we, we looked up and we were on like the big screen. And then I started getting texts. Um, Vinny Brasha texted me. He's like, you just got the coolest shout out, you know, on TV. And then we found out Jim Courier had said, um, like, that's Anna Lee Waters. She, she doesn't, rarely she loses rarely or loses something. or something. Yeah. So it's like, it, it did kind of feel like, I don't know, like, like an elevated yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah. That was, it was on Netflix, right? That no, was this no, was no, no, no. this was the Indian Wells, the BNP Paribas, Paribas oh, okay. the big ATP. Yeah. It's like they call it the fifth major. It's like oh, not it was a major. Yeah, it was an actual tournament. Yeah, because Nadal like, and Alcaraz played recently for like an event. Oh, yeah, that, that wasn't, wasn't that. That, that, that was in Vegas, no. I think, or something like that. Yeah, no. All right, what about this? Who's the coolest contact you have in your phone? Well, that's tough. I don't think I have that many. Like, <laughs> I, I know who it is. Who? I mean, Gary V. That's a pretty Mom. cool one. You have that in your phone. You, you do. No, I don't. I yeah, do. Ooh. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, that, it sounds like somebody's like got canceled or something. <laughs> no, it's say. not somebody who has canceled. I mean, I, think I don't he, have her number. All right, do we get five guesses? Yeah. Okay. Joe Biden. <laughs> 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 He's not a her. I don't think. Uh, yeah. Damn. Oh, it's a she. <laughs> It's a she. Yeah. Miley Cyrus. Uh, no. Why can't you say it? Uh, no, I mean we can say it. It's you just can we say don't it. necessarily know hundred it was an email. Yeah, I got I got an email from account. Serena Williams. That's awesome. But I don't yeah. think I have her phone number. Her number. phone number. No. Yeah, I don't know. What was it about? Num- well, let's pickleball. Keep going. It was, it was about, about pickleball. pickleball. Yes. I think it was like during like she all was, the MLP Yeah, she stuff. was just wondering like like the what about like it was going crazy yeah. and she was just kind of like what's going on type okay thing. Yeah. in our yeah. uh, investigations we yeah. saw that she had yeah. trademarked uh serena williams pickleball oh. but that was like that was like really? a year and a half two years ago okay. and then nothing really well, came that's of it, probably so. when this email it was right. like early on um yeah. We'll let that I slide on a technicality. A t- yeah. That's a, yeah. we'll, we'll take it. You you interacted with Serena Williams via some form of of messaging. We're, yeah. we're going to count that. I mean, I think like all the people that I have in my phone are all people that are involved, all the cool people involved in MLP. So mm-hmm. yeah, right. Probably yeah. a lot of people Owners have their stuff. numbers yeah. in their phone yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I kind of wanted to go back, if you if you don't mind, to to what a normal day of training looks like for you, because I'm sure a lot of people are very very interested in what the world number one pickleball player does to to train um so if you have an average day what would you say that looks like for you so um if there's a lot of tournaments going on and i'm not home then it's way different but this is like i'm gonna give you if i'm at home for two weeks in between Mm -hmm. the tournament i've just taken a couple days off and i'm starting to get back to training i'll usually play pickleball in the morning for like an hour and a half you would say is our usual and then I'll go to training with my personal trainer for another hour and a half. And then I'll usually either play pickleball again or do some other type of physical activity again in the afternoon. Okay. So and it's then, usually anywhere from like three to five hours of I mean, work. I think it's very rare that you ever play pickleball twice in one day. Yeah, but it does happen. Sometimes. It happens, but it's rare. Well, what I've recently started dabbling with is like playing an hour in the morning and then playing an hour in the afternoon. And I think that might be like interesting to start using like on the days that I'd like really feel tired or don't really want to play, like just go out and play for an hour and then come back and play for an hour instead mm-hmm. of just like an hour and a half or two hours slot. But I think probably the last couple of years, if you added up all the time that she spent training, more of it has been gym and PT. Gym and PT over actually play I probably pickleball. play pickleball four to five days a week okay probably like once a day sometimes twice if it's like before a tournament and I haven't played too much like this time I haven't I didn't play that much after the last event um and then trying to like ramp back up quickly that's when I'll play like twice in a day but if I I start earlier and have like two weeks then I don't play twice in one day and it's always 
until a few days before the tournament, it's all drilling. That's what I was gonna ask. So what's what would you say is your is sort of your ratio 80, of drilling? 80, 90% to, drilling. Okay, I was curious because did you say 80, 90%? 80 to 90 percent. Doesn't say it's very specific. Oh percentage. no. Well, yeah, you're only playing two hours a day. That you, you, people might hear that, and that's not a ton. But in two hours, if you're actually doing focused drilling, you can get so many more yeah, reps. Yeah, yeah. And play. we're not taking long breaks. You know, yeah. it's like we're doing drills, grabbing a sip of water, and like getting right Moving back on. out there. Mm -hmm. It's hard to. I know we have a lot of people in South Florida, but it's hard to like get a group together because some people don't want to play with some people or. They have other, they already have pickleball planned. So it's like really or hard like to get Or like they're on different, they're playing APP and your schedules just don't yeah. align. So it really is. Or you just want to play women's doubles and you don't want to play mixed. Or like one guy doesn't want to play with three girls. So it's like tough to get a foursome together. Usually I'll grab her and then like sometimes two five oh guys or something like that. Mm -hmm. And not even like the top names that you would know that live in South Florida. Sure. So what are you, what are you going to do if you're in a, one hour drill session if you two are drilling together for an hour like what is that going to look well, like well there we have drill days where it's like we're just going to do a little bit of everything so in the hour we'd hit dinks whatever we always start out with a lot of dinking like every which way we do a lot a lot of basic like okay today 100 in a row another day 400 in a row another day 200 in a row we do like 400 dink, in a row dinking. we've yeah. done yeah we did that and, once and, and we stopped and it's all, we only count her dinks we don't count mine oh my goodness if i miss it doesn't count like yeah. But she can't miss because the, I'm yeah, gonna miss. the 400 in a row was a day. And we literally <laughs> had to stop the rally because we had been dinking for so long, and I was at 400, and I was like, "All right, I feel." What's like the world this. record? We should try and like break that <laughs> or set it. We used to do count that on volleys, but now it's like there's no point in hitting slow volleys trying to get a, like you know that's not the game right. anymore. Yeah. So yeah, and then there's some days where we'll just like work on stuff, where this is like, all right, we're just gonna figure out a new shot or we're going to, or you're, you feel like you're struggling with, with one you know, shot. A lot of times we come home from a tournament and she's got a list of like, the funny thing that I, that I've just realized is I was having a lot of trouble with my thirds and I couldn't figure it out. Cause I used to never miss thirds. Like when we would play together, it was always her that missed the thirds, not me. And now, I, <laughs> and, now and now I feel like it's the other way around. Like I'm the one missing thirds and she's the one making them. And for up until like, six months ago I was using a fiberglass paddle and with that paddle you have to hit a lot um like your strokes have to be flatter like you can't hit a lot of spin it yeah, might it even was like it was like butter yeah, yeah. there's no grit but it's got all the ball at all. slides off the yeah paddle. but exactly. it's got a lot of pop so it's like a, it's a good paddle but it didn't have spin so when I was hitting my thirds you have to hit them differently and then I see like when Anna and like Rachel Warbacher when they're hitting their thirds they're like going like this and like with my, I tried it with my fiberglass paddle and it goes straight in the bottom of the net. Yeah. And I'm like, how are they making these thirds? Like I just, I couldn't like wrap my head around it. And then the other day, I think it was like, what, a couple weeks ago or something. I was like, I'm so sick and tired of this. And I take my uh, carbon, carbon, now, carbon yeah, now I have my carbon fiber paddle and I take it and I go like this and it's like a perfect drop. And I'm like, it's been the paddle this whole time. <laughs> it's always a paddle. I never, like I didn't try. No, like, it's weird how technology it. can like, alter the way that maybe you swing or like I mean yeah. so I like I feel like all these new players are coming in and they're hitting all these spinny speed ups and all these spinny shots and I feel like a lot of my game is like I'm very consistent but I'm very flat with all my shots like mm -hmm. all my speed ups are flat my dinks are flatter my backhand roll has spin but other than that like my game I feel like is pretty flat and now with this paddle I'm having to like change a lot of my game to make it better by adding more spin so mm -hmm. like the drop is one thing I've just figured out where I'm having to like do the Nadal on my drop and it's way better. So I'm sure there are like other things we'll figure out in drilling where like if I go like this or if I like really drop my wrist and go like this, like you can come up with some cool shots. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've, you've both been playing for like, when was your first tournament together? That was, <sighs> um, when was, was our first tournament so together? What year did we win nationals? 2019, so it was so 2018. Casual. I'm like... <laughs> 2018, I think, was the first tournament we played First together. tournament together. You must have been playing for a decent amount before then. A, or a, year, a, a year and a couple months. But yeah. you've seen the, the evolution go from paddles where you really can't get hardly any spin to now what we have today with the with the carbon fiber. But you've been able to stay pretty much at the top of the game throughout that entire time. Yeah. What What is the process of of innovating and and 
adapting. And I would say you guys came in and innovated immediately. You guys got, <laughs> you guys were called bangers. You had mm. the pickleball purists furious at yes, you because yes. you were speeding everything up. And in that way, you were certainly ahead of the curve of the way that pickleball is. You basically set the, the <laughs> meta of how everybody is playing now. So you're ahead in that way. Are there areas like your third shot where you need to, where you feel like you need to adapt to the current technology or gameplay? Yeah, well, I feel like right before COVID, that's when we were starting, you know, we finished the year number one, we were hitting the ball really hard, and then COVID came, we didn't play much pickleball, we came back, and everybody was hitting the ball hard, and they were beating us at our own game, like, they were hitting the ball harder than we were, they, and, you know, we couldn't figure it we out. We couldn't figure, like, we, like, we almost quit, because we were like, <laughs> we just must not be good anymore. We just got destroyed by people, and we were, and like, they were just hitting the ball so hard and we, we couldn't counter. We were like, what's going on? Well, we found out everybody had started lead taping their paddles. Mm -hmm. And so not only were they playing more aggressive, the ball was just heavier. It was just coming at us with you yeah. know, just that force. And so that was when we actually started putting lead tape on our paddles. Yeah. And, and I um, think we also hadn't really worked on dinking that much. And I think that was also when we were like, all right, we need to learn how to dink. And we just hit like <laughs> tons of dinks and that type of thing. So I feel like... Every time we're kind of stumped with something, like all these people hitting spin, or we like figure it out, and then we're like, all right, we're good at all this, so this is pretty much the only thing we need to work on to like kind of elevate. And I feel like that's why we've stayed on top because people bring something at us, and then we're like, okay, we need to work on this, and then get it to that level. And that just keeps. I think, too, like one thing that's helped us is because we've played so long, and because the paddles were. I don't want to say like inferior, but you know, very different. They like were we had to, we had to like learn technique, you know, we had to like learn how to dink properly and we couldn't like allow the paddle to do a lot of the mm -hmm. work. And so I think like in tight moments where technique can break down for a lot of people, the fact that Anna Lee has like really good technique and, mm -hmm. and like can dink a hundred to 400 balls in a row if she has to really, yeah. really helps and has helped to keep her like at the top too. Right. I feel like I'm I dink way more now than I used to. Like I don't I'm very selective with the balls that I decide to speed up. Even well, it's though it looks the like I'm speeding up a so lot. Yeah, it's now. like now you you have to be like really careful on the balls you pick or else it's like everybody can hit the ball really hard now whereas it used to be like you just sped up the ball and people were like what? Like, yeah. You know. <laughs> So you are now playing with a with a new paddle. You have the the carbon fiber technology that you're getting used to like were you involved in, in obviously creating this and, and tell us a little bit about it. So it's funny because when I was playing with my um, fiberglass paddle, it was the only paddle from any company that I ever liked. And I, everybody was trying to sponsor me as a kid and I was like, this is the only paddle I like. So that's why I went with paddle tech. And then I was very stubborn from that point on, like, this is the only paddle I can play with. If I played with anything else, I'd suck. So when, um, Curtis and I and my mom were designing this like ALW line. Curtis was like, we need a carbon fiber paddle. So we were basically designing this paddle and I wasn't going to use it. She wasn't even sure if she was going to use yeah, it. We yeah, we were just going to create the paddle because everybody was using them and, you know, we thought it would be good for the consumers. And I was just going to stick with the one I was, you know, playing with. And then I hit with it for a little while. I actually hated the paddle for the <laughs> first like couple weeks. Yeah, because like, you had never I hit couldn't with figure it. it out. I was like, what? How are like, how are any, how is anybody using this? And then after that, it was like kind of like a light switch went off and I was like, this paddle is better. Yeah. And then I started using the carbon fiber. So it's kind of funny how I didn't want to use it and then ended up really liking it. Mm -hmm. And you guys just re-signed with Paddle Tech somewhat recently. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you had to have had Yola and Selkirk and all these guys all knocking you. at your <laughs> at your door. Throwing like, absurd amounts of money. <laughs> right. What's the decision like to to stay with with Paddle Tech, who you know at that time what is doesn't have the same sort of of resources that these guys are are throwing around some of the competitors like? Well, they I think one thing was they believed in us like from the beginning. Like they were the first people to really say, "Hey, we think you guys can be good. We like you know the way you guys play." And they were kind of the first people to kind of say that to us. And then I think loyalty is like a big thing. So you know. And I love my paddle. Like, I, I, yeah, she didn't want to change. I didn't want to change she my paddle. Like, so I much. I tried the Yolas and I tried the Selkirks and tried and we the have seen text. players. I mean, I'm not gonna call out players by name, but we've seen players switch paddles and all of a sudden they can't. They don't do it. They're not doing as well. Yeah, or the opposite. Or, yeah, or, yeah, or, or, the, the, or the opposite. Correct. So it's kind of like, and that was one thing that our agent 
um, really kind of enforced with us because she said, I've seen it so much in tennis where like you go, you know, a player will go for the money, switch to the racket. They can't win with the racket. And then they come back begging their old sponsors. And it's please not, take me back. It's not like you know? the paddle tech offer was like way in, more inferior no, than no, the other ones. No, that's not what it I was, meant. No. Like the offer was better, if not the same as all the, all the offers. So it was pretty much everybody was at a level playing field. And it was like, which paddle do I like the most? And... You know, we love the Selkirk owners. They're the nicest guys ever. But, um, but Curtis, Curtis and is just like, we're like family. Yeah. And like Annalise said, like loyalty is like really important to us. And it just seemed like the right decision. We really didn't have to think much about it. I mean, Curtis has always been really good about like using our input too. And we didn't know if we went to another company, if they'd just hand me, a, put a paddle in my hand and right. be like, use this. <clears throat> Whereas with Curtis, I can like design my own paddle. Yeah. I mean, you hear like Ben's going and prototyping and mm -hmm. like tweak this, tweak that. Is that something you've ever done? Yeah, he'll like, well, I won't necessarily like go in somewhere to like a lab yeah, and like right. do that, but it, he'll send me like different options and he won't tell me. Like we talk about the stuff he's putting in the paddle, but he'll be like, all right, here are three paddles. I'm not going to tell you what's in, you know, which one and you're going to see which one you like the best. And he'll label it like BA or like something <laughs> weird where you yeah. have no idea. And then you'll hit with it and you'll be like, I like this one or I like this part about this one and this one. And then you kind of create your paddle. Um, but it would suck if you like went through that process, created a paddle and then hated it, which has happened before. Right. Not with you, but Not with, with me, other people. but with other people. Yeah. Right. How, how many years is that? With, with Paddle Tech? With Paddle Tech. Yeah. Like how long have we been with them? No. How long oh. is this? So you just renewed? Is it like another uh, well, year, another three years? For, yeah. It was a longer term to contract, but I think you've resigned like a year ago. Yeah. I just resigned a couple months ago. Yeah. So yeah. It seems like yesterday when... You announced that you were resigned. Yeah, I know, so. right? I feel like we were just actually in Austin, like playing this tournament. Time flies. Which is funny. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think did I play with Deckel here last year? Or was that two years? That was two years ago. I played with Deckel. So you just resigned. Are you are you back or are you not back? What's <laughs> yeah, what's the yeah, deal? Wait, Lee? What's going on? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that I more resigned like as like a almost like a paddle tech coach. You know, I mean that's not my that's not my title. But, um, or like advisor or not really sure, or maybe come back. <laughs> um, but between coaching Anna Lee and then coaching tweener King, <laughs> 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 um, like if I had to worry about myself and try to like train it, that would just, I the thing don't is, have though, enough time in the day. You get so, she gets a lot of practice from, and like well, yeah, because, right. because I train with, with Anna Lee for an hour and a half, two hours a day. And then I train with Christian for an hour and a half or two hours a day. She's so I'm getting, a like lot of rep. I'm getting a lot of reps. Um, but I, I played a local tournament with Anna Bright a few weekends ago and that was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, and, and we won that one. So I, I don't know. We, we do have like a, like a little announcement though. Yeah. I mean, her, I don't come, know if now's her the time. Back. Her comeback. Yeah, now is absolutely the time. The <laughs> floor <laughs> is yours. The, the the, thing it is, better be interesting. <laughs> your, your comeback has not even scratched the surface yet. Well, here's the thing. Like, yeah, I dink and do all those things for four hours with Christian and Aunt Lee, but I don't get to play like ever. So like, I would need, I need to, that's what, I need a lot of reps because. All right, let's see if we can do this. One, Drum roll. two, three. We're, We're playing, playing in the US, US Open. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Oh, the laugh was the same too. Let's go. <laughs> so yeah, so we're, uh, Annalie and I are going to play in the US Open in April together in Naples. Um, we actually haven't played that tournament in a few years, so it'll be kind of cool. I've always done bad back. there too, so I'm <laughs> hoping to break this curse and we are going to win there for the first time together and then we will have won all the majors, quote unquote majors of pickleball. So you have not won a U.S. Open pro We've US not, Open? I oh, haven't okay. won a U.S. Open in any division at the pro level. I've won like the 3040. I don't like, think we've whatever. played U.S. Open for like three, three years, years maybe. Yeah, was, so what's, what's the deal with that? Since Zane, before can, covid Zane, you can offer some insight here too, but to me, it feels like, I mean, I think it was like two and a half, three years ago or something. Like I remember listening to the Freestyle Boys yeah. and Ben and Rob are talking about the terrible experience at the U.S. Open. And then that seemed to be the last year that, you know, they had like the, like top, the top echelon pros. of talent. Yeah. And since then, the U.S. Open has kind of been like second tier in yeah. my mind. So the now US it's Open new was ownership, right? Exactly. New ownership. Um, they're very motivated to like, up the amateur and pro experience. They know the Open. that the nobody likes that. Tournament. They know the yeah, shortcomings. They do, and I'm I'm pretty sure 
I think they told me that they're announcing soon, like for 2025, like all of the upgrades, um, whether the pros will be allowed to play in it 2025, where we don't know, I guess. But, well, how, um, how does that work for you? How, how are you guys able to play in it? So and, we put it in our contracts. Okay. I have a very good agent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we're, and I think it, like everybody knows that by now. So it's not like a big secret. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was just like important. I mean, that we love the PPA and, and the tour, but it was important, like, just that the U.S. Open and Nationals, we were still able to play. Just I think right. USA like Pickleball. Tournaments. Yeah, mm -hmm. USA Pickleball is still, like, a big organization. They have a lot to do mm -hmm. with our sport. So, like... And that's where we... Again, that's where we started, you know, yeah. was with the U.S. Open and with USA Pickleball. And I think and they're trying to grow the sport a lot internationally, and that's what Pickleball needs. So, if we can help support that and, you know, stay on their good side and help them and they help us, I think it's a good... Yeah, hopefully um, they have sports betting for that one. I'm going to put Can a decent amount on, on you guys. I don't, don't think so. Well, I'm well, 17 now. So Was it 17 or 18? I'm not 17. sure. Wait, I'm pretty sure there there's restrictions an age. based on who you're betting on? On from age, an age? Because I was 16, yes. nobody could bet yes. on me, which really? was like a problem because I was in a lot of the finals. So they were like, well, nobody is going to be able to bet. So right. like huh. they can bet with for like free games or stuff things like that, but not for actual money. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember if the age was 17 or 18. I think it was 17, but maybe not. It would make sense. And it could 18. depend on the state regulations right. as well. Hmm. I, I just remember that. the PPA being like, Ali, turn, turn 17 so <laughs> <laughs> people can bet on these matches. Uh, okay, but to put a bow on it, you have not closed the door to making a full-on comeback. Well, I mean, played I mixed, you played mixed doubles with oh, Christian. Oh, I played with Christian. I played with Christian. Um, he was Masters. supposed to play with Jesse at the Masters, and she was injured with her elbow injury. So it was like literally me or no one else. <laughs> and that was the first. She wasn't even supposed to be cleared for that tournament, but she practiced like two or three days before the tournament. Yeah, I went into my play. PT, and I was like, do you think I can get cleared for this tournament? And he put me through a whole bunch of tests and he was like, you're good to go, but only mixed doubles, not women's yet. Cause women's obviously requires a lot more movement on the female part. Um, so you I got did cleared, well there. played. Yeah. We, we had an, an upset I'd say at the, at the masters. And so that gave me a little bit of confidence. Um, and then I kind of had an inkling that I was going to be playing us open. So that's why I asked Anna bright to play in the, in the local and, um, like the skills I feel like are, are there, but like the mental game for me wasn't quite there. I had a lot of ups and downs, but, um, it was fun to be back on the court. And I mean, it'll be the first time that we've played together since my injury could be the last, I don't know, but it's going to be cool to be back out there together for sure. Win or win or lose. I can say, I don't know. We're going to win. We're gonna, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, as we were sort of saying beforehand, like I got my start playing with my dad in yeah. tournaments and we were, I, I guess I was, you know, I was out of high school at that point. So mm -hmm. we weren't at the, you know, father son sort of age. We were more like the just playing as as friends. And, you know, some of those some of those memories are are just absolutely incredible. And so it's uh, yeah. it's cool that you guys get to run it back at the yeah. U.S. Open. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> OK, react to this. We saw this circulating. It kind of circulated, died, and then it came back. This is a this is a sentence from the Daily Mail, referring to Anna Lee. Okay. She has a reported net worth of one point four million. I'm just gonna let that sit, and you react to that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what do you want? Like high, low? What do you? No, want? you can talk like, about how has the money in pickleball <laughs> evolved over the past few years, being able to actually turn this into not only a sustainable career but one where you can make a a good living better than the average. Well, we show. talk about this a lot, especially recently. Like when we first started playing, I think our combined deal with Paddle Tech was like three thousand dollars for the year. And we were like, What? We're getting three thousand dollars to play pickleball. That's crazy. This we're is we're awesome. getting that Wait, we're twenty paid? that was like twenty seventeen, maybe twenty eighteen. Okay. Yeah. It was probably three thousand each, but whatever. It was like I don't like, think what? so because at the time I was mom was playing pro. I think they just kind of added me. To no, this. no, it you were me. the one. It was uh, you because they you you were literally the only kid, young person like competing in pickleball tournaments yeah. at that time. You and William Sobeck. That's right. That's um, right. That's funny. And uh, but yeah, I mean the fact that you can even say that number with pickleball is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I ne never. Thought. I mean, we started. I out mean, just playing especially for fun. this for sure. year with everything that's happened and the money that's like being thrown around and that everybody's making, it's like I don't like to think about it. 
because if I think about it, it's not real. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I just think about it. if you start thinking about all the money you're making, you put way too much pressure on yourself. You're like, oh, I need to keep playing so I can keep making this amount of money or whatever that may be. So I just try to not think about the numbers. Like, I know a ballpark of what I'll make this year, but I don't know the exact number and I don't want to know the exact number because, you know, I just think it puts way too much pressure on yourself. Feel free to throw that number. Well, I mean, I would love to know the exact number. But yeah. just, I'm sure there are plenty of people, but no, we won't get into that. Um, have you had any like big brands from outside the sport reach out like, you know, a Nike or a Lulu or. Well, Fila is a big like I don't think people really realize because Fila has been in the sport for forever, but Fila is a huge international, world, yeah, international worldwide yeah. company. Yeah. I think they're actually might be bigger internationally than they are like in the U S mm -hmm. like they're huge in like Europe and yeah. Korea. And they, be they and believed in pickleball from the beginning and they're getting ready to take some big steps and even make pickleball bigger in other countries, et cetera. So that's one. Um, and then there's a couple that I can't say yet that I will be announcing soon that I'm excited about, um, which yeah. everybody will know those brands. So. Definitely what about like about some that. that reached out, you maybe entertained it. It didn't come to fruition. Yeah. That's happened that, on a couple. That happened on one. I was actually using the product, like on. You can I name that like, one. You're no, not, you don't no, have I can't. Up. <laughs> well, I was I was using the product it on like I used it Oakley. on a couple interviews, etc. No. Well, I still, still use loved, that product. Still love it. Yeah. Um, and they ended up not having the budget in the end, but it was still cool because that company was even interested in sponsoring me. Right. So I think we'll see more of that. And then there the was future. like a really, really big one that oh, got thrown yeah. our way. And it was like, don't get excited. Well, like, I think I got a little too and excited. And we got really excited. That would have been like, was that one maybe like a year and a half to two years ago? No, this, no, was, this like was like last, last in the past year. six months. Okay. Yeah. And you, and you, Octagon is your yeah, agency, right? Yeah. So they, and they know great. what they're doing. They yeah. do. Right? They do. And yeah. they're great. And they've taught us so much, like just about sports marketing and... I mean, we've turned down deals too that weren't huge companies because we didn't feel like they fit or we thought it would look Or it was weird. too much time. Yeah. Some of these companies want so much of your time mm -hmm. and when you just don't have that much time to give, um, it's just, you can't do it. It'd be mm -hmm. more stressful than it would be worth, you know? Yeah. So that's another thing that our agent's really good about is like time management and not take, making sure that we don't take on too much. Mm -hmm. um, because she's seen it in the tennis world where somebody wins a tennis tournament, a big tennis tournament, they get all these endorsements and then their game goes down because they're, you know, lose focus or they're traveling, doing other things. And so we've just tried to like keep things manageable, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So are you working on that, the Gucci sponsorship? I am trying so <laughs> freaking Gucci hard. Mom. You just don't even know. <laughs> yeah. You and I have an axe to grind on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I'm the original Gucci in Pickleball, That's to true. be, to be quite honest. That is so true. I mean... Maybe we can collab. Yeah, there we go. There we go. This is, we'll count it. We'll count it. Go to them as a joint entity. See if you can make something happen. There we go. She um, says we can share all of our clothes. So anytime she buys something, she's like, we can share it. So <laughs> I need to start having you buy it, though. You can afford it more than me. Like, it's funny. Like, she has this jacket in her closet, and I have the shorts that match in mine. So it's like... That will come together. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. The, the Gucci uh, jumpsuit, walking out of your Range Rover... Well, she is a Range Rover, life. too. She's a Range Rover mom, too. I didn't get it for free, so, though. Yeah, but <laughs> she has the big one, and I have the sport one, so it's like mama Range Rover and then, like, baby's Range Rover. Like. I've got a Hyundai Elantra. <laughs> if anybody was wondering. Uh, all right, let's talk about... Uh, now, I, I called you, and I was like, can we talk about this? You were like, I don't care. We'll, we'll yeah, talk about it. yeah. Lobgate, what was dubbed Lobgate? Oh, I want to know man. after it's like of all, all the that, things to be remembered for. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your well? Because I mean, that went like decently it never, viral. And it just didn't go away. It got like, she up. followers from it. It still yeah. doesn't. I still get, get DMs to this day over that that day. Like quick complaining. <laughs> like yeah, like or you know, like oh, are you gonna cry if they they lob you? Like you know, just all these. They like, were like yeah. giving her like. Like very threatening messages, like you're such a bad mother. What are you oh, yeah. teaching to your yeah. child? I got I got pure hate. The only good thing was I got like a lot of social media followers right. that weekend. Because <laughs> I guess yeah. people like to see you people like love controversy. fall from grace. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but no, I mean it was it was partially like a good learning experience. Um, I can look back and kind of laugh, and we joke about it all the time. Yeah. Um, you know that day that day really did 
pissed me off. <laughs> well, it's well, funny because like I, I played, I was playing Regina in a tournament. I think. Can it was, I like, give a little year. backdrop on yeah. what yeah, 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 for, yeah, for, for those who yeah. don't know? So I don't know how you I think don't it was know. A <laughs> Vegas PPA. Yes. Right. The sun was really bad on one side of the court. Right. You guys were playing Yana Grichkina and Regina uh, Regina Franco Goldberg. And basically, they were using the angle of the sun to their advantage. And like they were every relen- shot. relentlessly yeah. lobbing. Yeah. Yes. It was you literally see every it. shot. You it was whiffed on a few. Ball. Oh, yeah. It's getting chippy out there. Yana <laughs> starts hyping up the crowd. She's like, this is perfect. I'm in her head. And it just became this like viral moment that was put on social media, picked up by all these different publications uh, and outlets. Everyone. And um, yeah, so... I guess the the question would be, you know, what's your stance on lobbing into the sun now? Well, okay. So, like, I totally get it. And, like, those close to me were, like, you know, it's part of it. It's a strategy. Like, whether you agree with it or not, it's a strategy. And I'm like, yeah, but I would never do it. And they were like, but that doesn't matter. It's, like, part of the game. It's a strategy. Get over it. You're you're wrong, you know? But, like, when we switched sides that day, because it ended up going – Three games, right? Because yeah. I got so fired up and angry that we ended up losing game two. We right. switched side. We switched back. We get on the good side. And I said to Annalie, I was like, we're not lobbing. Like, we're not doing the same thing, even though we could have. Because, like, just to me, I would never do that. But I've accepted the fact that I probably was in the wrong for acting like I did. Probably. Annalie was, like, the adult that day. Yeah, and she was, like, holding you she, back. She, like, grabbed me and she was like, Mom, like, shh. I, I remember on a like, timeout, I go, I like push her to, because my trainer was at that time, I push her and I was like, deal with her. Like, <laughs> just deal with her. I don't want to deal with her. <laughs> it was funny because she's pulled me out of like situations, not like that, but where I'm just like totally. And I was like, all right, mom, I got to I mean, save I think you. you literally, you just like lose your mind for a second and you don't, I mean, well, things I are intense. We had beaten them pretty bad the first game and then they start doing this. I think we were thrown off a little bit because we, you know, weren't think, expecting we're, it. Obviously. We weren't expecting it. And mom's overhead is actually like one of the best overheads like in women's pickleball at that time. So I think that was kind of frustrating too because if like there was whiffed, no sun, I whiffed, she would have like, quite a like, few balls. And then yeah. I tried to put the sunglasses on. That didn't help. I think it almost made it worse because I had never played in sunglasses yeah. before. I mean, if it uh, happened again, though, you would not have the same reaction that you. No, had I mean, I also then. learned like what you should do in that situation. Like just let the ball bounce. Yeah, right. You know, just back like, up. And like, don't act like an idiot and don't get chirpy with your. <laughs> I'm still opponents. learning that one. <laughs> Don't act like an idiot. <laughs> what do you do? You dislike a lob more than Colin Johns dislikes a net cord. Oh, poor uh, Colin. She dislikes a lob into the sun more than <laughs> yeah. Lob, lobs, okay. lobs into the sun get me. They do. Yeah. They get me. That's funny. We've poor all Colin we, though. We've Colin all doesn't let cords. Did you see the oh. exhibition yesterday? In the exhibition, yeah. <laughs> he played. He played it perfectly. So there was the the Amazon exhibition that you guys put on, right? Yep. Um. I forgot who the influencer was, but dude, Josh, Josh. Richard. Josh yeah. Richard. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. We've Josh shouted Richard, him so. out like a couple multiple times, times now. Yeah. I think he had like a broken arm yesterday too, and he was like still yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. hand right. or yeah. something. Well, he he had an overhead that he spiked basically into the net, and it clips the tape and goes over. <laughs> right. And you right. can see Colin is just like <laughs> Colin does his normal reaction, like as if it was a real match. My favorite that is meant the something. hat throw yeah. that oh, like, yeah. goes down on the timeout call. Oh, Colin. I had a practice session with Colin probably like four months ago. We warm up everything. It's me and Deckel versus Colin and Ben. First point of the entire match. I serve. uh, Colin returns to me. I had to drive net cord into his throat. (gasps) We called it. (laughs) Over. Are you serious? You just that was no, it? but it was it was definitely ruined for like yeah, a good yeah, half hour. Yeah. After. Oh my god! <laughs> um, oh. Deckel was like, "Should we just go home?" I was like, <laughs> "Probably." probably. <laughs> oh, it was very satisfying. I did not say sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so what do you feel like you have a lot of pressure on you to win? Just given how frequently yes, you win. I feel I mean, like it's people almost- just like think it's so easy and like oh like she like she wins all the like she should just like win every match because she can win every match so you know I feel like a lot of people on social media are just like if I ever lose or Ben and I ever lose or whatever they're kind of like this is the end of the road yeah. and yeah. there's right. a new sheriff in town yeah there's... like oh their reign's gone it's like wait we haven't lost all year this is our first loss of the year like yeah, but we gotta entertain ourselves <laughs> we need I know. just keep winning that's we what, need that's that's we need some thing. new storylines. Like, yeah. That's what I don't, that's what I am so impressed. Like, how do you play so many matches and just not one day just have, just play bad? 
Right. You know, like, well, I think that's why in doubles, it's harder to do that because you're, if you have a good partner, they can kind of help you with that. Whereas in singles, if you have a bad day, it's kind of like you're a little screwed, but, and I've definitely lost more in singles than I have in the la in doubles in the last year and a half or two years, because I think that's the reason, like, it's just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're smiling. I know, you know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because we want to talk about when you were upset by Tyra Black. Uh, and you had a very interesting reaction that I think confused some people. Wait, can I just put some yeah, back, backdrop on that? So I think one of the things that puts the most pressure on her is not winning, like winning, winning. It's when people start throwing records at her. Like, like right now she's at 97 and they're like, when are you going to win your 100th title, PPA title? Right. You know, and at that time... It was, I don't know why we did this, because we would never do anything of this again. But this. that was the fourth tournament in, a, in row. a row. Four weekends in a row. That was the fourth and one. And I hadn't lost. Up and the then. record was, if she had triple crowned that tournament, she would have been the first to win seven triple crowns in a row. Okay. Which is a stupid thing to which, even which, like, <laughs> want to like, like who, who would even want that record? Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> so dumb. I, I, like, why, at the time, why I wasn't happy with six is something that I'll never understand. But before the tournament even happened, I was on the phone with my trainer and he's like, Annalie, don't play singles. Because I, I also had, before the tournament, I did that collab with the Pointer Brothers the day mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. I did some PPA, ten, tennis, I'm very emotional right now, PPA <laughs> tennis channel, like interviews. And then I had a workout that my trainer gave me that day. And I was just, and I'm like talking to him and he's like, Annalie, you're not in the right head space. Do not play singles. And I'm like, I have this, I have this thing. I have, to, I have this I have record. To, I, have I have to, to win this it. record. I have to play this tournament. And he was like, okay, Annalie, I'm just warning you. Like you're, you're not and I know it's an interesting day when I start out playing well in singles. Like, if my first round is good, like, that's kind of a problem. And I played Shelby Bates, I think, and won 0-0. Oh and, oh, and I was, like, playing really well. It wasn't necessarily because Shelby was playing bad. It was just I was, like, playing really well. And then I actually warmed up with Tyra that morning, mm -hmm. which I, n I never warm up with with like somebody I either warm up with mom draw. or Catherine or somebody on the other side of the draw. Like, I never warm up with people I'm going to play. But I didn't really have an option. It was, like, during her height of the ACL injury she couldn't play so I was like I'll warm up with Tyra she, I think Tyra's a really nice person and I like Tyra a lot so I was like I'll just warm up with Tyra so I warm up with Tyra and then I have to play Tyra in the match and my mom's like Annalie do you, you want to just hit a couple balls before you go out there and I'm like no I got this like I'm like and I said that because I was really nervous and didn't want to have to warm up because I tend to get more nervous with people who aren't highly ranked. And at the time, Tyra wasn't highly ranked. Right. So like if I'm playing Catherine, well, and, like, you know, her from home, like you yeah. practice with her. But like if I'm playing Catherine or Leia or somebody who's like really top ranked in singles, I honestly feel less pressure because I'm like, mm -hmm. if I'm going to lose, this is the person who should beat me. Right. Whereas like at the time I was like, oh, like. Tyra shouldn't come close to beating me at she the had time. Just started, like she had just started yeah. playing. So, and the last time I played her, I'd beaten her like pretty bad. So I was like, all right, whatever, I won't warm up. And then the match, I think it was Christian and Tyson were on before me, and the match was forever. It was like three setter, super long. And then it was, I was sitting for a long time, and then I go out and play. And, and Tyra played really well. Tyra was playing really well. There was a spot in the court where it was shaded, and it was really bad, and I was getting so upset. At this and I was just focusing on everything there was somebody in the crowd too who was um who had like heckled me on Instagram a lot and was like saying really bad things about me on on social media so you and knew this you knew who this person I knew was. who this person was are they like uh are they uh, an anonymous account you know who they are or are they like they actually <laughs> I don't have really want to say because if I say this person will probably just go okay. even more crazy right, right, so right. I'm it not it must have been say. Jimmy it's just it's, it's, <laughs> it's giving Jimmy Miller <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't think Jimmy Miller doing the podcast yeah, the, it's uh, not it's okay. not jimmy miller i, I will giving, say it it's was giving jimmy guy. miller <laughs> but he was cheering for the tyra like really hard and so i'm just like going crazy i'm like Italy, you're playing like yeah blah, everything blah, blah. was negative negative and super negative i'm not hitting my shots i'm not playing well tyra's playing amazing she's hitting a ton of passing shots i'm also not playing her correctly i'm just hitting it 
right where she wants it every single time. And my mom's like, Annalie, if you want to win this match, you're going to have to stop hitting it exactly. Anytime she has this shot, she goes here. And then I'm so upset, I Ernie one of her thirds because I know where it's going. So I go and Ernie and miss it. And I'm like, Annalie, what are you doing? Well, I've never seen her try an Ernie in like, singles. I, I just like, ever. I, I don't know what I was but doing. But in that moment, are you like in the heat of competition, you're trying to prove I'm so much better than you. I'm going to do like these extra things or I'm going to go right <laughs> at you. She was, I've never, Ernie. that's one of those, that was one of the, I was referring to before where there's been a couple times where she's just mentally like broke. Like I was literally having a psychotic break. That's what I I called like, it was this, that she like literally had a psychotic And the whole time break. I'm like please beat me, please beat me. I want to lose this match. I don't want to be here. I'm super uncomfortable. Like, yeah, she was saying I'm, that to me like in the timeouts like, like I don't want to be here on this court. I just want this to be over. But like what what like what in that moment is making you uncomfortable? Like why are you feeling that way? I just I'm feeling tons of pressure from I think it was the this record, record from this record. Yeah. And also, I'm playing Tyra, who, like I said, has like was a, newcomer. Had, was a newcomer, and I was like, oh, if, I was saying, if she beats me, I'm, I know the social media that's coming. Like right. stuff like that was just going through my head, which right. is stuff that you can't have going through your head. And then you have the a real life social media troll sitting courtside. <laughs> yes, and then somebody <laughs> who I had been friends with at the time started coaching Tyra mid match, and I'm like, like going over to her bench, and I'm like, mom, like. What is she right, like? Right. There was just a lot over there happening coaching yeah. going on at the moment. Like so and much stuff. And I was just like, re that's why my reaction after I lost was like, yay, because this is over type thing, which I regret. I shouldn't have done that. I should have let Tyra have her moment. I should have said great match, you know, pat her on the back, whatever. I did thank the refs though. I did. <laughs> I, did I didn't forget to thank the refs. I thanked the refs. And then I kind of like ran off, like kind of like tossed my paddle at my mom and like ran off, which I'm not proud of. But I had done before when I was like, what? Like younger. Two, younger. Like I just run because I, I like feel so like I just felt so uncomfortable. Right. Um, but now I know like at nationals when I was down to Catherine in the third, like seven, two or something in singles. I was like, all right, Annalie, if you lose this match, you're going <laughs> to shake her hand. You're going to tell her how great she did. You're going to hug her. You're going to slowly go to the bench, <laughs> grab your stuff, casually walk off like. Don't but I think, but I think that was like my post that I made to you after that was like, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Unfortunately, yours is on a much bigger scale than any of us when we were teenagers, when we made mistakes, right. you know, and you're going to learn from it. It's going to make a you lot. a better person. But unfortunately, you know, she had to endure the social media. I like, even text hate. Tyra after I think the next morning or that night. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like you played really well. Like props to you. I was just having a total, like, I don't really out know what, yeah, experience. out of body experience. Like, I'm so sorry. And to this point, like, I think Tyra is one of my better friends in pickleball right now. Mm -hmm. um, she lives close to me. We practice sometimes. I think she's a really nice girl. I think she's really good at pickleball. So um, might have created a friend out of that. But to be fair, yeah. you did celebrate when she won. I know. I was cheering her <laughs> on. So some would say. You didn't throw your racket. A yeah, very good or sport. your paddle. Sorry. I know. It was weird. So, so yeah, hope, I, I know now. That I'm not gonna make that mistake again, but I will lose. It'll, it's gonna happen, and I, I'm gonna know how to deal with it when it does. Thank God, <laughs> there was not people live streaming my junior tennis matches. I, this, that would be the end of me. If any of that footage resurfaces, you might have to find another co-host. So this Happy Gilmore serve that you did, yeah, is that like is. I have forgotten about it, honestly, until you just mentioned all? it. Did you just do that on a whim? Like So in practice, it is way better than the one in the tournament. Because I'm just trying like, to pull a Zane. But I'm, we, just, just I'm trying to just figure like, out how to break the trying serve to innovate. rules. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and like in practice, it's deadly. Like in practice, I might even ace people with this serve. Like it's so good. But then I get in a match and I get way too tight. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, like I hit it way too soft. But it's interesting because like it really depends on the player. Like I played um Brooke Buckner and she really didn't like it she missed a lot of returns and then I go play I think it was was it Leia or um who was the girl I played Mary first round Mary Brasha yeah like Mary Brasha and they handled it really well and it almost was a disadvantage so I think like I have to try it early in the match and see if the person likes it or not I think in mixed doubles it can be good too because it pulls the person sure. if they're stacking out wide so I think it's just like there are times when to use it and then there are times when it's not working and don't are, use it. Are we going to see it anymore? <laughs> I mean, maybe. Probably. I had forgotten about it until now, so I don't know. But Can we'll, you get we'll Ben to do one in mixed doubles <laughs> with you? 
I don't know that Ben would want to do that much movement before the point would even start. <laughs> well, he'd have to tie his shoes, right? I know. Yeah, right. Has he ever played a match with you where he hasn't tied his shoes? In a real, in a real. Nobody no, always warms in a tournament, up. He he yeah, he warms up without his shoes. He tied. doesn't tie his shoes till like the ref always the ref says, says 15 like seconds. 15 seconds, and then he ties his shoes and then he does his arm thing. <laughs> but yeah, no, he, he's. You would think that like you would want to warm up with your shoes tied because it would be dangerous, <laughs> but not Ben. We gotta ask him about that next time he's, he's on the He's just waiting pod. for the moment where he can take it off and then use it as a as a paddle. <laughs> there we go. That'd be impressive. Honestly, if he does that during a game, it should it should count. One hundred percent. New right, rules. Should we do a little uh, like instructional segment here that we can we can clip out? Sure. Tell us about the uh, two handed backhand roll you've been doing. Um, it's super effective when done right. Not many people have that in their bag, but walk us through it. When's the right time? What's the technique? So when I was younger, I couldn't really hit a backhand slice dink. I like wasn't strong enough. My I was too weak on it. So we were practicing with Kyle Yates one time and he was like, Annalie, why don't you just try to put two hands on it? Cause your two handed backhand's good and just try to roll it. And I could immediately do it. And I didn't know how I was hitting it for the longest time. It was just like natural to me. And then later in my career, I figured out it's a lot of like left arm. Um, I'm really dropping my wrist and then use it like mainly my left arm. My right, right arm's just kind of there for support. Um, so I feel like because of that, it's really good to use when somebody pulls you out wide to the backhand side because you, the further away you are from the court, the more angles you have to work with and the more you can really use your left arm to get around the ball. So if it's like really close to you, you honestly kind of have to hit it differently, more like Riley's like little bunt backhand kind of dink. So I would say it's probably most effective if somebody pulls you out wide. Um, that being said, when it's close to you, you can speed up. So it, it kind of adds that element of like, is she going to dink this or is she going to speed it up? So maybe it's better to use when it's close to you for as far as that aspect of it. So I like it because it, my opponents don't really know what I'm going to do with it. I can dink line, cross, lob, speed up, cross court down the line, down all the middle. All from the same position. Yeah, like all from the same spot, which is really cool and really useful. Right. So that's why I like it. I'm we're actually, actually working now. Oh, you're gonna. Say I was that. gonna say that you can on say a three-handed back. <laughs> <laughs> I use my my leg as my. Third no, hand. on a on the slice, on a slice dink, and a, a slice drop, and a slice return. Just not that she would necessarily use it that much, but it can't hurt to have well, in another singles, shot. I noticed know? I was having like if it was a short backhand, but not like. Not not short enough to where I'm like reaching for it, but not deep enough to where I can like really hit a two handed backhand. It was kind of in the middle, and I didn't really know what to do with it. And now I'm starting to like slice it and then get up into the cat and mouse and singles, which I feel like is my strength. Um, so that was really helpful, and I think that gave us the idea to then be like, all right, maybe if we slice some backhand dinks, it would kind of throw a little bit of spice into it. And then I'm working on like slicing, and then like. Whew, the pretzel. Like the pretzel. So, so do the, the pretzel? Like, is that like, what's the Gabe pretzel. shot? The Kyle and Gabe shot? Yeah. Okay. yeah, so I'm like, because nobody in the women's game has that shot. So I'm like, maybe if I I mean, they might it. have it. They might just not use it. Yeah. You're calling it a pretzel? It's like when you, you know, sort of it, line up the backhand and then you oh, flip it around? A pretzel is when I speed up at Wyatt Stone and he goes like this <laughs> and it looks like an Auntie Anne's pretzel. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that's how we use it over here in I'm Texas. I'm pretty sure we call it, when Gabe does it at home, we call it a pretzel. Yeah. Okay, interesting. I don't know. Because like if I'm using two hands and then all of a sudden I go to one and do this then they would know what I'm doing but if I also have the slice in my arsenal then maybe I could use it I'm still figuring it out I haven't used it and then you have yet, um but. junior mint which he doesn't go by that anymore he does so, mm -hmm. he does it both ways with both hands oh yeah right oh yeah we I play with Jack all the time yeah. over here I see all types of fun <laughs> stuff that doesn't work yeah. He's on my he's, he, he's on my Instagram reels I think more than any pickleball player. Yeah. I'm like, oh, there's Jack Monroe. Well, like, he's, he's another one. He's shot. a you William Sobeck and Jack and Rachel Jack Elliott. And, yeah, the Elliott had some battles. Only back young in kids the day. playing. It was like mm -hmm. the junior the junior event, and it was like you four. Yeah. <laughs> and Caden. And Caden. Yeah. Do you want to do a few of these these rapid fire questions? I want to ask about the RV, and then we can do rap. Okay, yeah, questions. never mind. RV, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about the RV. And did you did you steal that idea from us? Because the oh, first time we ever met, you guys right. took a picture in front that's of the dink, right. van. the dink van. That is true. I remember that photo. It was in Arizona, I think. Yeah, it was. Photo. Yeah. yeah. Um, um. So the 
so the RV was interesting because I didn't have any, like, I didn't pick it out. I didn't have any dealings with it. It was all my dad. Like, he it didn't found, come down the Carvana vending no. machine or what? <laughs> he, he, like, he found the driver. Or he found our it. driver, Mr. Scott, who ended up being amazing. He's a bodyguard. He's a chef. He drives the bus. He's a super oh, nice guy. I want to talk about that, too. The bodyguard um, thing. Yeah, so okay. so he's awesome just I don't to have you pointed at me. I don't know. <laughs> 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 don't need oh, are we Sorry. Right? what are we talking about the story that happened no, no, oh, no. continue okay. with the rv yeah so we have mr scott who drives the rv to the locations that can accommodate our bus or whatever you want to call it rv um and after each match i go into the rv and like kind of chill uh, watch the matches going on because there's tvs in it but i don't stay like we don't stay on the rv yeah he's he sometimes stays on the rv um, and then we rent a house and then, so it's basically just there for the tournament usage. Cause we're there all day long. You're there from like 10 o'clock in the morning to like eight o'clock at so night. It's like your personal clubhouse. Essentially. Yeah. It feels yeah. like home. It's like, I think it's That's such an cool. advantage cause it yeah. literally feels like I'm going home. I can relax. I can kick my feet up, take my shoes off, eat some food, laundry, bathroom. Like it's got everything. I mean, part of, I think the advantages of the RV, which we didn't really realize when we were when we got it um originally was is the fact that like you know we forget i think most people forget that she is still a kid mm -hmm. and in a world of mainly adults and it's just nice to be able to like remove her from that because we are doing this almost every weekend or every other weekend and it is very stressful and pressure filled. And there's always some kind of drama going well, on. Well, especially about something. since I'm on the top, I feel like a lot of the pro players just don't like me because of that reason. So it's like, why do I want to like hang out with them after a match when they're not nice to it? Like sometimes they'll make snarky comments to us or like, like little jabs. Like when we're like, dude, we're here to play pickleball. You're here to play pickleball. Like, can we not just get along without like having all this drama? Mm -hmm. so, so it's just it's nice good to be able to, to get like away from that. Remove, what would we talk her. about then? <laughs> what would we talk about? <laughs> but it's really, I think, help to like just keep her mood and keep her stress free and just yeah. allow her to focus on the matches. Um, for sure. It's, it gives me a space that I can like warm up to. Cause like, it's really hard to warm up before a match, like physically, like doing stretches, et cetera, when there's so many people, so many pros. So if you have like a little area where you can just like warm up, use a band, it's like a big thing too. Right. Okay. What, what's a bodyguard thing? No. So, so like I've seen, um, I actually think it was Jimmy that said it, um, like, like, I don't understand why Annalie needs a bodyguard. And like when we hired Mr. Scott, he was, uh, we didn't hire him to be like a bodyguard or security or anything. He is an he, ex cop though. But so he, don't mess with Mr. Scott. Yeah, he, no. he, he was, he's like very high level detail. Um, he's been around some crazy stuff. But this summer, and I won't say where because I don't want to make anybody feel bad, but this summer, a fan who actually liked her, we don't know this person, was so excited to see her that with he running force, he was, jumped, like, like literally jumped, jumped on her. Like bear hug, like full like, squeeze. And he was a very big man. Yes. And, and like, I felt something like in my chest area, like kind of like pop ish. And I was like, like, oh, I said, mom, like, I think he just like hurt me. And I was like, oh, he didn't and hurt And this you. was actually a couple weeks before the Tyra match, which yeah. is interesting. Um, but I didn't think anything of it, but then like I started not being able to get out of bed. Like I would like go and to like sit out hurt. of bed, like and I'm like, oh my god, this is killing me. And like uh, probably like three weeks later, I get home and I go to do a workout with my trainer, and I physically like can't work out, and it was getting like pretty bad. And we go and get in, not a, we got an X -ray. MRI, X-ray, yeah, MRI, MRI, whatever. And they were like, you don't have like a cracked rib or anything, but you have what's called it was some inflammation of the tissue between. They the said cartilage, it feels tissue, like whatever, you're having a ribs. heart attack. They said like 30 percent of people yeah. who feel like they're having a heart attack actually have this. So it's like, oh my, like. So that was kind of when we were like, we need so like the, to yeah. So when Scott offered to kind of like walk with her at events, we were like, that would be awesome because. I mean, she ended up being out. So are for, you walking around events with this guy like yeah. on your tail now? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's in front of me, which I think is better because he kind of like, you know. I might have to test the, this guy and yeah, see if he's capable yeah. of. Yeah, test him. There test we go. Him. Yeah. He's like such a nice guy, but if he, he like gets into a situation <laughs> where he needs to like be authority, like, well, it's also kind of strange. Sometimes people come up to you and they like, you know, put their hand in weird spots sometimes. <laughs> 
So it's like, like he'll come down. Like Does that some... happen to you, Zane? No. no. <laughs> it doesn't. No, but like somebody will come, like put their arm on me and he'll be like, no, like he'll like just take their arm and remove it. Like, so that's nice. That aspect of it is nice well, too. Well, again, because she's, seven, she's a 17 year old girl, you know, like she doesn't want like necessarily yeah, you want creepy know. autograph guys waiting for you at the airport and dudes giving you random bear hugs okay yikes we got a pressure washer rapid coming fire in the next door with the rapid all right let's do yeah. the rapid fire questions then we can call it a day <laughs> annalee who's your well just real quick answers one word or two words just okay short but who's your trickiest matchup in singles oh this is very hard um well, it depends on the fire. day. Yeah, no, it's okay. rapid this fire. Is not really Give rapid me five fire, minutes and I will come back. My trickiest matchup in singles, Catherine, if, like Catherine. Catherine. Catherine's my toughest match. Yeah. Mixed doubles. That can be male or female. <laughs> Please She's respect. not good at rapid I think, it's, I think it's Catherine again. Like, I don't know. Catherine, I think Catherine, Catherine and Jack were tricky. Catherine and Jack were tricky. I feel like it's people who have like high ceilings can speed up the ball like at any time, like that type of, that type of team. Gotcha. Well, I, we can skip women's doubles because I'm going to guess that's Catherine if you're playing against her. <laughs> um, Favorite food? Chicken. Favorite city to play pickleball in? My hometown. Celebrity crush? Chris Hemsworth. Who's your women's doubles partner in 2034? <gasps> My child. You're going to have a child in 10 years? just doing the math. <laughs> you're going to have a, an 11-year-old child in 10 years? And they're going to have to be a prodigy. Yeah, a lot of things Mom, are going to Mom, there's something to I've been wanting to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to sit on that one. For oh, wait, oh, wait, now would be a good time to ask her her worst subject in uh, school. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the list. We'll, go, we'll start it off nice. Best subject in school. History. Worst subject in Math. school. <laughs> there we go. The favorite TikToker. Alex Earl right now. One change you've liked in pickleball over the last, whatever, seven years you've... you've that it's played. become more aggressive, for okay. sure. One change you've disliked in pickleball. I'm going to say the paddles. Really? I don't, I don't like the new scale like of paddles. I think there's a... I think it's a good thing, but I think they might be a little too much right now. Just in general. Like, overall, like... I'm not saying one company is doing it. I'm just saying, overall, I think... I think the game would be more interesting if... They if it was less if, spinny or less, less pop, less pop. I'm gonna say mm -hmm. because I think the firefights would last longer. Um, I think right now we're seeing a lot of like counter winners, mm -hmm. and I think the sport would look better if people are like boom, 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 boom. Like you know, like we used to really have. There really points. aren't yeah. as many of those firefights like we used to have. Just because it's like in men's doubles right now. If some guy speeds up at one guy, they either put it away or miss the shot. Like there's no like firefight. Like the women can't necessarily put it away as much. But with the guys, like, I think pe a lot of people would like to see longer hands battles. I agree. I still remember some of those, those turn. I remember some highlights. I think you two against uh, Simone and, oh, and yeah. Corinne oh, or Corinne, Lucy Corinne. from like yeah. Beer City three, four years ago. Yeah. We had like 30 <laughs> shot firefights. Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore. No. We won't bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back just a little. All right. Well, anything else that you guys want to add before we wrap it up and they can get to their power washing <laughs> next door? I don't think so. I think it was nice to be able to talk about some things that had happened before. <laughs> Glad to get it off my chest. Yeah, anytime you, know? you need therapy, you just come on the pod and it's uh, we'll talk it It's funny because we just wrote a, a foreword for a book that's being, a pickleball book that's being published. It might actually be out. Um, and when the guy, uh, pr when the author approached me about writing the foreword, he was like, but I don't know, want you to be upset because there's actually a segment in there about Lob gate. I think we've accepted. I think I think people can say, okay, we've made mistakes, but I think we've made mistakes, learned from them, and they won't happen again. So hopefully that's hopefully that's what people think. We'll probably make it. No, no, we're gonna make different mistakes, but I hope we don't make the same mistakes. Yeah. So you're so well spoken. It's a good mother daughter. Put me on right Dr. There. Phil. <laughs> I can see it. Um, what was the last thing? Oh, can we do if we come over to the uh, tournament this weekend, can we do a tour of the, sure. the RV? Yeah. yeah. Lock it in. Book it. Okay. And if What's you, his and name? If you Mr. Scott? Mr. Scott. And if you come at the right time, he also is an award-winning barbecue. barbecue chef. No so way. He, wow. So he'll make yeah. me like grilled chicken or something like in between matches. But like if we come like a day before like Wednesday, he'll make like pork butt with like mac and cheese coleslaw and like, be, like baked beans like... So you gotta time it, Real, time it just yeah. right. You'll Dang. get to come food. at lunchtime. 
<laughs> okay, that can be arranged. <laughs> thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah thanks thank for coming on. We'll let you guys go. Good luck this weekend. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. The pickle box. The pickleball box. The pickleball box. Yeah, the oh, just kidding. It's the pickleball box. The pickleball box. It is a subscription box. Gear, accessories, apparel. And it comes straight to my door with all the hottest pickleball gear in here. It's so hot, I can barely. Over $250 of value in each box, and you only pay 99 bucks for each one. Go to the dink.shop, undoubtedly the best gift for any pickleballer, or if you're like me, or anybody who listens to this, you're obsessed with pickleball, this is honestly like the perfect thing for you. Yeah. I'm not gonna.